Good morning, modern steaders. We've been getting in, get a ton of questions about homesteading, how to start, modern homesteading, how to do this, how to do that, which is great. We love them. We've been so busy up till now, we're starting to slow down. I haven't had much time to answer the questions or to make videos on them. So what I want to start doing now is once a week, do a weekly series of answering your modern homesteading, your homesteading, your farming hurdles. Like what questions do you have? What's holding you back? So leave them in the comments down below. I'll read through them and once a week we'll make a video on a certain topic. So the first question we get quite a bit is about infrastructure. And I think the way we're getting the question is more how do you get started and how do you get your homestead? If I'm taking that question the wrong way or if you have a different way of what infrastructure means to you, leave it in the comments down below. But what I'll start with first is infrastructure, like getting your first homestead. So we've been doing this for 10 years now and not here. We help, we've only been at this property for two and a half years now. And we're in the middle of building it. We have a lot of stuff we still want to do, a lot of stuff we still need to do just to make it feasible so we can save our food, so we can grow more food, we gotta get more gardens going, we gotta get more fields going. So we're in the same place as you're in, just maybe in a different phase. So when we first started 10-ish years ago, we had a house, some land, we put our first garden in, we started with a garden and compost worms. We didn't know much about it at the time, so we started little and we grew over time. We had moved, we moved to a different area, same thing, we started with our gardens, put the gardens in, and grew over that. Grew over time. We got our feet wet with chickens, grew our first batch of egg layers. The first time we, we had egg layers, we raised them up in the basement, got them ready to put outside, we put them outside, I think we had six the first time, put them outside for the first night, went to go find them the next day, all six of them were gone! not a feather that's disappointing because they were we've been raising them in our basement for probably almost three months they were good sized birds we had a lot of love and care but we didn't let that stop us we just it was a loss it stunk we just got back into it all over again and i think that's what it was a big lesson for us is you put your heart and your soul into this you love it you learn to love it and it's gonna hurt sometimes, but when it's good, it's good. So where I'm trying to get with those points is you need to start where you can start, and if you hit a hiccup, a setback, or something that just takes the wind out of your sail, you gotta find a way to overcome it and stick to it. With homesteading and in life, if you wanna go anywhere, I read a quote and I love it. If you're sick of starting over, stop giving up. I think that's how it goes. If you're sick of, yeah, if you're sick of starting over, stop quitting. And I went, you know, that's right. Anytime I had a hiccup or something didn't go well, I gave up sometimes. And if you give up, you gotta start all over and do something new. But if you stick with it, you're gonna get better. It's gonna get better. Maybe just out of pure stubbornness, you'll win. But hey, a win is a win. What's the Babe Ruth saying? You miss every home run, you don't swing. I don't, I'm not good with sports, but there's some kind of analogy. I'm sure you know the analogy with Babe Ruth and you miss every home run you take a swing at. I don't know, leave it in the comments down below. I'm bad with that stuff. I'm sure there's a modern steader out there that knows what I'm talking about. The first time we had our homestead, the first time we started raising our own animals in our own vegetable garden was for ourselves. We were in a northern town just like this, so there wasn't a lot of demand for our products we were growing, which is fine. We were just getting into it, which was awesome. And the extra eggs, the produce, the produce we'd feed to the pigs and the chickens, and the extra eggs we'd give away. When we moved, we moved to a more populated area, which was great. If you wanna sell your food, and you're trying to get into homesteading, you wanna to move to an area that's populated and not too far from it, because then you can sell all of your produce. So that's another thing you need to figure out when you're thinking infrastructure. Where 
how am I gonna be making money with my homestead? Do I wanna make money with my homestead? And if I do, how do I wanna make money for my homestead? Do I wanna make it from selling products online, whether it's soap, honey, or do I wanna to go to a farmer's market and sell stuff? If you wanna do that, you need to be in an area that's not rural. You wanna be in a place that's populated. You can sell it in a rural spot. From our experience, it's gonna be harder to sell and you're gonna get less money for it. You wanna be in an area that's more populated, you can get more money for it, and it's gonna be easier to sell. When we had our chickens back in mass, we could sell the eggs so fast and for a good premium, it's not even funny. Being back up here in Northern New Hampshire, we can't, and if we do wanna sell them, you get two or three bucks a dozen for them. We give our eggs away, but we feed them back to the animals. I'm not going to sell my eggs for a couple of bucks. Or to pay for the feed, maybe. But I don't want to be the guy out there spending more money on my eggs to grow them and then to sell them for less. I might, I don't know, it might seem kind of odd, but if I'm going to lose money on my eggs, I'd rather give it to somebody that either wouldn't buy them or has never had a pasture raised organic egg before. I know I'm kind of talking in circles here, but the infrastructure question is a hard question to answer without having like, this is where we are and this is where we're going and this is what we're trying to get. Just trying to answer it broad. I'm just trying to give like a bigger answer out there because without knowing your particular circumstance, I can't answer it for you. But for us, it took us eight years to get where we are right now and we're still not where we want to be. So it's a growing journey. We're learning and growing the whole time and we're having fun. So you just need to figure out where you wanna go. What do you want out of your homestead? And if you want me to be able to answer more questions for you, let me know in the comments down below. This is what we're trying to get out of our homestead. How do we get that? I could give you, I can try to answer your questions and let you know what's worked for us. But without knowing the complete particulars about infrastructure, all I can say for us personally is it's been a long journey, but it's been a fun journey. Anytime I stop and sit back and think about it, the stuff that I thought were failures or like took us way out of the realm of where, what direction we thought we were going have been great life lessons. There's always a golden nugget, even in the times, the hardest times out there. So look for the golden nugget. Try to find out what it is that you can learn from this opportunity. There's a lot of them. If it wasn't for me having anxiety and having really bad heartburn and just not happy and feeling miserable, I wouldn't be living the lifestyle we're living right now. And I'm so glad we found this lifestyle and I'm not on the, the rat race like everybody else is. Not, we all work. Right, so the rat race I'm talking about right now is the health rat race and the prescription drug rat race. If I would have stayed on the trajectory that everybody else stays on or wanted me to stay on, the doctors, I'd be on prescription drugs for anxiety, I'd be a zombie, miserable, and I'd be on antacid drugs for heartburn. I'm on none of those right now and I feel great. I felt better than I felt when I was 18. And if it wasn't for all those hard learned lessons, I wouldn't be where I am right now. So I'm thankful for everything. When I go through a hard time now, I try to stop and think about what can I learn from this? Maybe I won't learn it from it right this second, but I will. There's always a lesson to take out of it. If you really want to get into homesteading, but you don't have the land, you're living at home, you got an apartment, don't use that as an excuse. Don't let that hold you back. Start where you can. One of the first things we started with was the first winter. We couldn't garden. We live in we lived in a region like this. Ready? Look. It's beautiful in the winter time, but you are not doing any gardening. You're not going to buy any animals and raise them up as babies this time of the year unless you've got a nice big heated barn. Oh, you want them in your basement. We started with a worm composting book. I'll find that book. I'll put it on our Amazon page. And then I went out and I bought, at Walmart, three Tupperware totes, the big, like, storage containers, drilled holes in two of them, and we started worm composting in our basement. Come spring, we had some awesome worm compost. 
for our first garden. So just start somewhere. If you want to start right now and you don't know where and you're in the frigid area like we are and you don't want to get into warm composting or you don't want to wait, go out and get a sprouting kit and start sprouting greens. That's a great place to start. We can, you can get some LED grow lights and you can start growing your plants inside from seeds. We'll be starting that pretty soon. We'll be getting out our seed calendar or our plant calendar. We'll be starting to grow plants pretty soon in the house. You can start there. Worms is great. Start reading. Learn what you can learn now. That was another thing we did a lot of before we went too far in our endeavors or when we were waiting or we knew we wanted to do something but we couldn't do it yet. We got the books. We started reading. We started watching YouTube videos. We subscribed to Mother Earth News. That's a great magazine full of plenty of resources. And if it doesn't have all the resources you want, it has a lot of ideas for you to learn and grow off of. So don't let anything be an excuse not to do it. That would be my biggest takeaway. If you don't have the infrastructure, don't let that be your excuse. There's plenty of land out there that you could borrow. I don't know if you go to church, there's a lot of we have a lot of people at our church that are older. Well, I've talked to them. I know they're looking for people to run their land. And If you want to raise meat birds for your own meat, but you don't think you have the money to afford a nice chicken tractor because they can range from 100 to 200 bucks to build one, we built one. I'll put a link to that video right here. It cost us 30 bucks to build this chicken tractor, and you can raise 25 chickens would be pushing it. But you could raise 25 chickens in this chicken tractor. In eight weeks, you could have your own meat on your table and let me tell you the first time you raise your own food and you have it on your table it's quite an accomplishment we had ours first time we raised our chickens I harvested them in the fall so all the vegetables from the garden were ready to harvest so if one of the first meals we had we sat down at our kitchen table we had our in-laws over we had carrots from the land we had potatoes from the land why didn't you tell me I had snow on my beard? I'm over here talking to you guys. I got ice hanging off my beard. Carrots, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, potatoes. We had chicken. Everything from everything on the table except the milk was from the field. From our field. It was either chicken we had that night or turkey because we raised two turkeys that year too. That feels amazing to be sitting down at your dining room table enjoying a feast that tastes like no other that you can't even buy in the store that quality to sit back and go all my hard work paid for itself and I'm feeding my family with good nourishing food and I'm sharing it with friends or family that's exciting and to me for us that got the bug starting I was like I can do this and then when you're feeding your animals all your leftover food, it's like, there's no waste. Wow. I'm going to turn this into more of that beautiful food, and then I'll get to eat it in return. Such an abundance. If we do this right, nothing goes to waste. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and hard at the same time. It's kind of awe-shocking. The first time you do it sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, the first time you do it and you sit down and you're feeding, you're eating your own chicken, your own vegetables, one or the other at a time is good. But if you're sitting down and you're eating a whole meal from your land, that feels amazing. I hope that everybody could experience that. That's just, for me, that was a life-changing moment. Yeah. So in the, cl in the closing of this video, because it got kind of long-winded, I challenge you to come up with one thing that you think is holding you back or that you can't do and stop thinking about why you can't do it and think about what you can do with where you are. If you're in an apartment, start with one tomato plant. Start with worms. You don't even got to have a huge worm compost. You can just have a small bin in your kitchen under your sink. It doesn't smell. Start with rabbits. You can have rabbits in your garage. When we were in Mass, we couldn't do meat birds, so we had meat rabbits in a shed. I mean, it's endless what you can do. If you're in a city, you could make more money with your house or house lot 
than I can in northern New Hampshire with eight acres. You could be more productive and have better income by selling what you grow at your house. I'm not lying. You could. So my, I challenge you to think of one thing that you can do this coming year to get you closer to your dreams. It could be a long road. It's been a long road for us, but it's been a fun road. So it could be a long road for you to get from where you are now to where you want to be. But if you got there too fast, then what would you do next? So you need to learn to slow down, and I'm talking to myself here, and enjoy the journey. I'm not good at slowing down, as you can tell. So leave it in the comments down below if I didn't answer your question. If you think I went off on a rant way too far one way or the other way, leave it in the comments. Let me know. Let me know what, what you have for a question. I'll try to answer it. I'll share our experiences with you. I'm not going to give you a textbook answer that I have no clue about and just be like, hey, I'm a pro. I read it from a book. No, I'm going to share our experiences with you. The good, the bad, the ugly, the not so pretty. That's another thing. We have locked in with Hand Hewn Farm in April. We're going to be doing a three day pig charcuterie class. This is going to be fun. So, the, before the class, we're going to harvest the pigs. During the class, when the, everybody gets here, the pigs are going to be halved. They'll be in half, hanging up in half. So, it'll be like if you went to a butcher shop. So, we're going to have these beautiful halves of pigs in front of us. And we're going to go, what can we make with this meat now? There's a lot of modern setters out there who can't raise their own pigs, don't want to raise their own pigs. That's fine. So I don't want to hear that for an excuse. I don't have, I can't get this beautiful food. You can. Go find a farmer and have him raise you a pig or half a pig. And then we're going to have this carcass. And we're going to cut it up into meat. And we're going to make some beautiful, delicious food for two and a half to three days. We're gonna be eating like kings. This is gonna be good. So that class is coming up in the middle of April. We're ironing out the details. It's only gonna be open for eight people. I enjoyed today's chat. I think it went well. A little one-sided. I'm not getting too much feedback yet from you modern steaders. So leave it in the comments down below and we'll turn this into a two-way conversation. It'll be between me, you, and the other modern steaders They'll be answering your comments too. We'll be making some more great videos. This is gonna be fun. I can learn what you guys like, what you don't like, what you wanna what you're looking to learn about. This is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a great opportunity for all of us to grow as a community. Yeah, this is gonna be good. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I had a great time, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Since you stayed to the end of the video, let me show you the copa the prosciutto, and then we'll go inside the root cellar and see what the temperature is. We're curing nicely in the fridge. Look at that. Oh, that's nice looking. That's gonna be beautiful. Pluto wants it. And we got our bacon curing. That'll be ready in a couple of days to come out of the brine. Look, the cure. Temperature is 52. Nice. We haven't done anything with our window yet. It's cold to the touch. Concrete's cold here. And it's starting to cool off lower. The foundation is insulated, I think, from here down on the outside. So that's why this isn't super cold yet. So I'm hoping the vented window will cool off all the concrete and the floor and get it even cooler in here. I need to figure out the vent system still.